Andy and Jay, Andy and Jay. Talk to me, Jazz. What's happening? Welcome to the show. I got nothing, you know. Uh, just, um, you got something. I got you, nothing. I got you nothing. do. And if you don't have anything, first of all, let me say hi to Lena. Hi, Lena. Hey, you forgot to say welcome. Tell to don't. They tell me know. To don't shut tell up. me to shut up. That's what the logo says. It's right there. Listen, don't tell me to shut up. I need to get this brand. Don't tell me to shut up and don't tell me what to say. <laughs> that part I, period yeah I, don't yeah, tell me what to say i like it i like it a lot so um i'm not even going to get into my current situation because i don't have one what? And i don't even want to figure out what that's about it is what it is so no current situation no current situation i don't know what that is hard to believe jazz you know i i see some of the comments on your Instagram posts and I'm saying really like not even you don't even have like a little bit of an Adam Levine situation going on. I wish I did. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Speaking of Adam Levine, let that man live. OK, whatever his fiance, girlfriend, wife, whatever she is, let her handle that. I These text messages that I've been reading that these girls are saying he sent me a text message. We've been having a text relationship. That ain't a real relationship. Don't let TikTok fool you, okay? You could say nice things. And unless you're saying we fucking at seven, you're not cheating. I'm just saying. My thing is, who cares? Who cares? Apparently, everybody on the internet cares. It's a big deal. I wonder if this will hurt him, though. I don't think so, because I think part of the appeal of Adam Levine is that men want, or women want to believe that they have a chance with him. Was that a Freudian and- slip? <laughs> listen there are some men out there who want him too not you like i own two maroon five dvds i am a fan of their earlier stuff and both in both concert dvds he is performing shirtless so it might have been a freudian slip could have been i'm just saying i'm just saying i just my thing about social media is i feel like if if you wanted to it, it gives so many the people the opportunity to jump on whatever bandwagon is rolling, right? So if one person comes out and says, oh, he was texting me. Now, all of a sudden you got eight, 10 people who are coming out doing, saying the same thing. Right. Well, they say uh, the biggest mistake John Lennon ever did was letting the world know he was married to Yoko Ono because then all the women thought that they didn't have a chance with him anymore. So then the Beatles kind of like, I mean, fine. so listen, Part of the mystique and the intrigue that comes with marketing, especially when it comes to entertainment, is selling the fantasy right. that you too right. can have a piece of me. Right. Right. I mean, but the way things are going, does marriage stop that? Does being engaged stop that? I don't think so. We see what's happening to M.A. Uduko or Induka, whatever his name is. That whole situation. They've been together for a while, got some babies and everything. And he was still out there slanging. So I don't necessarily know that a ring or a contract or a verbal agreement that me and you are going to be together until the day we die. I don't know that any of that is going to stop a man or a woman from doing what they want to do. I mean, Jay is like, you got nothing yeah. from me. <laughs> Look, I, can't, I can't name names, but, you know, I do go on the road with plenty of comedians that, you know, when uh, when they hit the new town, when they as soon as that plane lands, wedding ring comes off. That's so. it. Because- so listen, relationships are a roll of the dice. That's all you can do is roll it and hope that, you know, you don't blow it. Or if you blow it, maybe you have a better chance of keeping it. I'm Groupies just- come out the closet. Who are goofies? Groupies. Oh, groupies. I said groupies. <laughs> anyway, you know what? Let, let, let me ask you this, uh, India and Jay, since we're talking about hot topics. Now, one of the hottest topics now is um, the Little Mermaid. Now, I know you have some strong opinions about this, so I've heard, or lack thereof, or um, you don't have an understanding as to why there is a, such an uproar about the fact that it's a brown girl under the sea. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I grew up watching the original. I like the original. My, I guess my first stance is, I don't know if we need a remake, but that seems to be what Disney does. They yeah, remake yeah. the animated classics. It's about so money not, for them. So, you know, now I argue with them about that. Uh, right. I remember when we had, when we had the, the TV one show in 2019, this was something we talked about for like a week that there was going to be, Black Ariel 
And we talked about all the backlash back then. So I'm, I don't, I'm confused. They knew it was coming. So why the backlash again? Right. Well, I think it's easier to know something is coming than to actually greet it at the door. I can know you're on your way over, but my real reaction is going to be when I see you. And I think hearing about it and then there being so much time in between us hearing that this is going to happen and that all of a sudden, bam, there's a black Ariel on your TV screen. I mean, I'm not, I don't care. I like, well, who cares? What does it matter if she's black? I mean, the, 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 I don't know why people are jumping up and say, and, and, and they're pissed off about a black Ariel saying it's ruining their childhood and stuff. I would be more inclined to claim, like I would be more inclined to be pissed off if she was like cl- combing her hair with a spork instead of a fork, because I'd be like, wait <laughs> You only get those at KFC. Where is she going to KFC? That's right. right. Oh, a spork. I was like, what the freak is that? Got it. What Got it. Spork. Listen, I don't, I can, let me see. Where do I begin? I have so many thoughts about this. First of all, it's a cartoon character. So it's already imaginary. So it should be whatever we can imagine it to be. Whether it's Ariel, whether it's Bugs Bunny, whether it's Snow White or any of those things. It's really a cartoon. So basically it is a figment of someone's imagination, something that someone made up. So perhaps you see Snow White, I see Snow Brown. You can understand that, India J, you yourself. You right now, you based on this lighting, you and I are about the same complexion. You might be a little lighter than me, not much. But I do think that there is um an importance of everyone as a child and as an adult to be able to see someone, even in the imaginary world, as well as reality, that looks like them. Yeah. And, and um, it's not like they cast a black girl who can't sing. She clearly can sing, right. too. Yes, That's she true. can. So, How about if they had an Indian uh, Little Mermaid? Well, they wouldn't be under the sea. They'd be in the tech shop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, Jay. Look, I, I don't know if you know this. In, there's an ocean right by India. So yeah. there, there probably would be an Indian Mermaid. I mean, has there ever been an Indian cartoon besides, uh, what's the guy's, well, he was blue, the dude from uh, The Little Princess, not The Princess, what is it, with the with the, the flying carpet? Aladdin? Aladdin. Yeah. But he was, he, he was blue, but the girl was Indian. Wasn't well, she? Wasn't there from... They're they're Arabian. Yeah, they're Arabian. Arabian. Mm, they were brown. <laughs> they were, that's what I was saying. Mm. They were Arabian. Well, the Indians made the carpets, didn't they? <laughs> that's so terrible. <laughs> I don't know if this Aladdin is based on like an Indian story. I think it's based on. No, I know it's not. Based on a Muslim story. Well, that would be the closest to an Indian cartoon, right? Would be Aladdin. Because name yeah. another one. I can't. At least not in the Disney world. Right. In Bollywood, do you guys have one in Bollywood? I'm sure they must. They must. Have, I don't. Animation's not really that big out there. I was gonna say I didn't. I wasn't quite sure that it was. I know for me, growing up, the only black cartoons I saw was Fat Albert, and we saw how that ended. Um, <laughs> but outside of that, it was always like a caricature or a stereotype. Like Tom and Jerry, you know, was not a favorite of mine. But I know the 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 only speaking character was like a black Aunt Jemima. Right. And she spoke Boogaloo. I don't know what it was she was speaking, but it was clearly based on a stereotype. And I I hated it, which is one of the reasons why I never watched Tom and Jerry. I hated how they portrayed the black woman. Right. So Jazz, you're telling me, if you're watching a trailer for a Fat Albert reboot and you find out that they've cast a white guy to play Mushmouth, you're going to be pissed off? You damn right. Really? Yeah. You can't even see Mushmouth's face. <laughs> I bet he take that thing off. He better be black. <laughs> he take that thing off his head. He better be rubbed under there. Well, I mean, I, I guess, I, well, you know what? I think there is a difference for me because it's one thing to be in control of 99.9% of all of the cartoons, entertainment, the portrayal of everything, and you get upset about the little mermaid 
But the little bit that we do have, i.e. Fat Albert, and you want to take that, that's part of the problem, right? If you think about it, even historically, everything that we know was brown from Cleopatra to Moses, all of that was played by white people. So they've been doing that since the beginning of time. So even what was it that they cast Angelina Jolie in it and was supposed to be a person of color? So it's not like they don't do it already. So yeah, I'd be pissed off. Um, wasn't Cleveland a white dude? The, Who the hell is Cleveland? Cleveland. The, the show. Guy. Yeah, no, his voice is a white right. dude, but he at least he brown. I'll take that. But he's still he a brown dude. Right, but the the voice is white. The, I don't the, care. If you if you hear me on the phone, you think I have a white voice and I'm a brown person. So wouldn't you be pissed off if I showed up to get my, you know, house and I'm it happens all the time. Right. People uh, I was never pissed off about Apu. I the... <laughs> Yeah. And that, that, that a white person did Apu too, right? Yeah, a white person did the majority of those characters. Yeah. If not all of them. Do you ever get upset about when people say jokes like Punjab and Abu Dhabi? I don't know, whatever it is. Do you get mad? Um, just depends. Like when I first, okay. So when I first started working with DL, I didn't know it at the time, but they'd all call me Haji behind my back. (laughs) (laughs) Haji. Haji. (laughs) Sorry about that, AJ. That shit is hilarious. I'm sorry. I just embraced it because I knew it wasn't coming from a place of hatred. I knew it was just sort of like. That was just their way of razzing me and initiating me, and uh, and I started to embrace it. And I would I would I would send I would send Gary notes, and I would sign it Haji, you know. <laughs> like, oh my god! <laughs> so I mean, do you get upset now when we call you Indy and Jay? Well, no, because we're telling the truth, Indy and Jay. So none of that is fake. It's true. He ain't no, really Haji. You know the origin of that, right? Yeah, because you're an Indian, and that would be I- Dot, not Feather, like me. Not exactly. It, it started, well, it started because, number one, there were three J's who worked for DL. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, number two, what happened was when we were doing the TV One show, uh, the network execs were already upset that the showrunners were white guys. So then when I got approached to be uh, sort of like do the head writer duties and, and kind of act as a producer on the show, I think they were hoping that was going to go to a, a black guy or go to Jay Phillips or something. And instead, you know, it went to me and I think they were upset about that. So DL started calling me Indian J and KP, white KP to kind of drive home to the TV one execs that You're different. he was in charge and he was going to dictate who's running his show and not them. Uh-huh. Well, I think he does a good job of that all the time, even when it's unnecessary. <laughs> but we won't get into that. <laughs> but this is what I don't understand. And perhaps you can clarify this for me since we're talking about race and, and, and stereotypes and whatnot. I often feel sometimes there are a lot of Indian people, not, not Feather, and probably Feather too, who think that they are better than Black. And I've seen some Indian dots who are darker than me. Who are that like as true. dark as the outfit that I have on right now, and they still think they're better. I'm like you do know you're brown too, you black too, right? Isn't um uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't uh, a lot of Indians a mixture of Arabic and African? Well, that's the Moors. I'm I'm not too sure on that. Yeah, one. I think that sounded well. <laughs> it was a good stab in the dark though. That's, that's what I heard that's all I know but yeah. when you got an Indian right here that you can ask but that's what I'm asking I said, I I heard heard he's like he no, never I, heard that I, before. I, 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 my 23 me didn't say that my 23 me just said 100% Indian so. <laughs> really? did you ever think that you were mixed with something else no because I knew because I got a free tw- the lady she was like the, the head of marketing or something she was very insistent I do a 23 and me kit and I was like you know it's gonna I said this is gonna be the lamest kit ever because it's gonna come back 100% Indian or if it comes back with anything else, I know you're lying to me. So, you know, my wow. like my family, my lineage wasn't even in the cool part of India that got raped and pillaged by the by the Brit by the British. I was so far. <laughs> I don't know if that's the cool part, but you know what? I, while we're having this conversation, I'm going to say this because I know a lot of people are going to feel like that I'm being disrespectful and some of the things I'm saying are terrible. But I actually miss um, entertainment and TV shows and movies from the 70s and the early 80s, but certainly the 70s, when you could say things 
the way Red Fox did or the way um, the guy who played Archie Bunker and all of that, because you knew it was fun, or at least I'd like to believe it was. I was not in the writer's room. I didn't know those people, and I don't know if they were racist or not, but I felt comfortable hearing, you know, um, George Jefferson call uh, Archie Bunker, a, 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 he called him a honky which my granddaddy said all the time. And, you know, we laughed at those things. And so I feel like we've become so sensitive now that the line to try to be funny um, and obviously not in a malicious way. But then I have to ask myself, if you make a joke and you say something about somebody's race or ethnicity, wouldn't the heart of it still be malicious anyway because of the origin? Well, so like when I look at Archie Bunker um, or Sanford and Son, we're laughing at their ignorance. We're laughing at the fact that Archie Bunker, when Archie Bunker calls, you know, George Jefferson a honky, we're not laughing at the fact that George Jefferson or, or calls him a whatever he called him. A, I don't know. You know what he's saying. I'm not going to laugh at the fact that Archie Bunker is so stupid. He called him that. Like, that's right. what we're laughing at. We're right. not laughing at the, at the word itself. We're laughing at that sort of situation, um, which is, uh, unfortunately, people seem to, to not recognize that little nuance now. Right. Um, and that's important don't... because even, listen, it, it was equal opportunity. Because I know on San Francisco, Fred, when Julio moved <laughs> next door, had a problem. <laughs> and every joke was stereotypical yeah. about, you know, Puerto Ricans yeah. or whatever. And he had a, a serious issue. But it was funny as shit to me. Right. And I'm brown. And I didn't look at it as, oh, that's terrible. He's, you know, uh, being stereotypical and being mean and malicious and saying things he shouldn't say. I thought it was funny. Right. When he'd talk about Bufungo and come get this goat. All of those things are funny, like in the very same way that I thought when I would watch the interaction between uh, Archie Bunker and, and George Jefferson, or even when you go to the Jeffersons and you look at the relationship between, I don't know, the white dude who was married to Lenny Kravitz's mama. <laughs> I don't remember his name. Tom. Tom. That relationship, it was all based on what we really experience in real life. And a lot of that is based on racist tendencies. And so I think if you can laugh at it, I think it's funny. The The problem is I, I do believe that it's one thing to laugh and we're all laughing together. It's another thing to know that you are laughing and also using a racist system to keep me down. Yeah, that's a valid. He's like, kind of. <laughs> and all of this ties back into that black mermaid. <laughs> I'm happy about the Black Mermaid. I think Eric, I think uh, Haley makes a beautiful uh, Ariel. I think it is a great opportunity so that kids who are black, brown, and white can see um, that we are equal. And I think if you grow up only seeing white cartoons, especially being a white person, then yeah, when you finally see a person of color playing something that you've always seen as white, you're going to be rubbed like, oh, my God, what is happening? But I think you should grow up knowing that anybody can be anything. Uh, did I, I don't remember. Did Cinderella have the same out outrage? Hell yeah. They were mad at Brandy. They were mad at Whitney Houston. They were very upset about that. I think it may not have gone as far because it wasn't a cartoon, mm -hmm. which, you know, from a marketing perspective they're all marketed different they live longer because you know you think about the merchandising of cartoons right, right. everything from t-shirts and they end up at walt disney if it's a disney thing it ends up in a happy meal somewhere it goes on and on and dolls and everything but for that that is in reality i don't think they do the same thing for right. that unless it's like a star wars that was i guess or social media that was like late 90s early 2000s the brandy yeah, uh, yeah yeah and people were upset about it i think it's now you're right. There's so much more landscape to social media that the outrage can live longer, spread wider and I don't know, impact heavier, maybe. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't I don't I mean, I don't see a problem with it. But well, the other thing is, truth be told, do you know anything in the ocean that's white? <laughs> well, everything, that's even the great white ain't white. Yeah. The great white is great. Everything's pretty colorful. 
Everything yeah. is of color in the sea. Everything yeah. has color. And if it's not, it's out of place. Yeah. It's lost. <laughs> So, so when we see, I haven't, you know, obviously we haven't seen the movie yet, but when this movie comes out, I wonder if there are, if we do see white mermaids or mermen in the, in the universe, in the sea, or if it's all black. And if everyone's black, it makes me wonder if it's a, like a futuristic thing where the only people, black people are safe. The only place where black people are safe are in the ocean. They have to move to the ocean. In the and ocean and Wakanda. Wakanda. <laughs> we got two spots. AKA Atlanta. In the ocean and Wakanda. Outside of that, even in Africa, we are not safe. AKA Atlanta. Yes. <laughs> but that's my thing. Even with, if you want to look at it, take away the fact that it's a cartoon. That's my thing is expand your imagination and understand that we're talking about something that isn't real anyway. So it can be however I want to see it. Hell, Ariel can have legs as far as I'm right. concerned and still right. be a mermaid. So we should be able to be flexible enough to see it in a different color. When I was a kid, there was a book that I really enjoyed reading. It was called The Rough Face Girl. And it was basically... The Cinderella. Rough Faced Girl? <laughs> the Rough Faced Girl. And it was uh, it was basically Cinderella, but it was with a Native American girl. First of all. Oh, first we of all. That for Jasmine. The Rough, like R-O-U-G-H, Rough. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Rough Faced girl. girl. And she was Native American. You gotta find that for Jasmine. Who wrote that book? <laughs> I'll look it up for you right now. Well, well, now, why was she so rough in the face? <laughs> Is it because she was Native American? <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's it's Cinderella. It was made in 1992 and is written by a guy named or somebody named Rafe Martin. Rafe Martin is a guy. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? The kind of stuff that 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 the rough faced girl and she was a Native American. <laughs> we gotta read that. We gotta find that for you, Jack. I gotta send some smoke. That might be your Christmas gift. Let them know. <laughs> that might be your birthday gift. Yeah, get that for me if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I just I don't know. I feel like <sighs> I think we're just sensitive. We are, because yeah. again, if you think about it, I've never seen an albino fish. I've never seen anything. I've seen a jellyfish, which is clear, right? Clear, but not white. So why would you be mad? Again, everything under the sea is of color because it's dark. It, come on. It's makes but sense. It also t it's a tad bit hypocritical because everybody's fighting for equality, but you don't want equality when it comes to representation. First of all, that, that hold diversity, on. I should say. Hold on. Everybody is not fighting for diversity. Well, they they, they make it That's seem not true. they make it seem like mm -hmm. diversity is the thing, but then when it becomes diverse, then people have an issue with it. Mm -mm. No, they don't really true. want that. Like they don't thing. really want diversity. It's the uh, the people the, the the people in certain markets that don't want diversity. The network execs they want diversity because it's good for money. It's good it's, for their bottom. Line. That is correct. That is absolutely correct. So I, I you know. I don't know. So then if they don't want diversity, then then we should have shows like All in the Family and the Jefferson. Well, no, we don't have those shows because, well, you mean in terms of the content or you mean no, like just, seeing black families uh, on TV? No, uh, just content. Like you should be able to still, if, if we're going to live in the same world that we lived in the 80s and 90s. Well, that's me saying I want that. Nobody else is no, saying no, no, that, I'm, I'm sure. I, well, I'm agreeing with you. I'm saying like if you don't, if, if consumers don't want diversity, then perhaps you should still live in the era where you could laugh at certain things. But that's not diverse. That's not about diversity. No, it's that's not about what I'm saying. But it's still that era. We still lived in that world at that time. So I think we're supposed to be pro progressing from that, right? So what I'm saying is, if we're not going to have Look diversity, you the blanks, the blanks are like what? If we're not going to have that diversity like it was in the '80s and the '90s and the '70s, right, and all of that, then we should still we shouldn't be so sensitive about the actual content that was provided because it's the same thing. We live in the same world. Well, we don't because well. On TV, you can't call somebody a nigga. In the, in the 70s and 80s, you could. That's the difference. So I'm saying in terms of content, you couldn't say those things out loud. You couldn't use certain words that refer to the LGBT community. Fred Sanford doing this all the time. You, can, you can't do that stuff now. Right. People are way too sensitive for it. But I think that's a totally different conversation than diversity. I think we have uh, diverse programming. When you look at all of us, when you look at Blackish, when you look at, you know, a lot of the shows that I don't I don't watch. And I think I think thanks to cable and Netflix and all of that, we see a plethora of of different colors and diverse programs. For me, it's really about 
the content. I don't know when we became so thin skinned about everything. And I don't know if people corporate, right? I don't know if they got to the point that they were like, you know what? We just, we don't even want to take a chance at offending someone. Even from, I mean, you're a comedian, Jay, you know, from a joke perspective, right? There are certain things now, I'm sure there was a time when you could just freely write. And now you have to consider who's in the audience, I guess. I mean, I don't know. Maybe comedians have a free pass that other people don't have. Oh, I, I think it's not necessarily I consider who's in the audience. I consider, are they going to be able to understand my intention with this joke? Or is this one word going to trigger them in a way where they totally miss the meaning of what I'm saying and just get offended because I've said one word? So then I. What's the worst thing you've ever said on stage that someone called it offensive in terms of the content, the context of what you said? So I, got, I have one that I'm, I'm, I'm working on right now where I talk about how I decide to go into a vaccine trial uh, for COVID. And I said, you know, I've heard the theory that vaccines cause autism, but I also know that vaccines must work because I've never heard of a measles outbreak at the Special Olympics. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you got some backlash on that one. But it's funny. So it's like, I mean, it's just a very, like, to me, it was just a logical statement. I wasn't trying to say anything offensive. It was just. <laughs> who got mad, the autistic people? <laughs> people who are considered autistic sympathizers, they get mad at that. So then I, so then I go on to do something about um, why I think autism is not necessarily a good thing, but like I, I say, you know, there are autistic, there are geneticists and evolutionary people that think autism is a form of genetic evolution. And I give examples of why I believe it, but that's still not good enough to make people. <laughs> so wait, are you saying autism is good? Some people think autism is a form of evolution. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've heard that. I've and and heard what, that. what are they evolving to? Cause have you seen some of these nonverbal autistic people? What are they evolving to? The example I use on stage is uh, I've gotten three UTIs because I was at a party (laughs) and a guy was telling me a boring story and I was too polite to tell him I had to use the bathroom. But you know who's (laughs) never gotten a UTI? An autistic person, because if somebody's telling them a boring story, they just walk away. <laughs> I don't think that I was thinking about that in terms of evolution. I thought in my head, I thought you were talking about they were becoming very robotic, like non feeling, kind of like detached, which is kind of where we're headed. But I like your story much better. Like matter of fact, like matter of factly, right? Yeah. You know, I so my so my cousin has an autistic daughter and when she was about like eight they discovered that she could hear a song on the radio and play it on the piano just by ear. Like mm. that's, that's pretty, I can't, my, my, my niece is not autistic and she was fascinated when she figured out how to play Mary had a little lamb on her phone. <laughs> that's, Maybe she was <laughs> autistic. <laughs> well, you know, I'll say this, the thing that I, I appreciate about people who are, are autistic is th- now, and I can't say everybody because there are a lot of people, I'm sure you saw this thing on social media where this Brit Barbie or Barbie Brit, whatever, oh. they were trying to decide whether or not she was autistic and ain't none of them doctors. So I'm like, how are you going to try to diagnose somebody? You don't know. You don't know nothing about that girl's life. And if she doesn't talk with a speech impediment. Are you sure? Because I'm listening with a different ear. Anyway, the point is, The one thing that I do know, at least the ones that I have come in contact with, those who are autistic, they very rarely are bothered by anything. If they feel as though you don't understand something and you have perhaps uh, stepped on the lines of uh, you about to get messed up, they will just explain it to you. Right. Right? Like even when you think about DL's son, Kyle. Things are said around him all the time and he will just simply explain it to you. That's not what that means. I am not that way. This is how I am. And there are no hard feelings. He's fine. So maybe we should all evolve to that. Yeah. And I, the I, other I, thing I, is, I've heard that. If I were to say something to Kyle that did offend him, I'm going to pay the price. Yeah. I tell you what. <laughs> yeah. Because Kyle, yeah. I don't know how fast you are, Indian Jay. But I'm not fast enough to avoid his jabs and hooks. I'll tell you. <laughs> and it won't be a poon jab either. It'll be a face jab. A poon jab. 
<laughs> Can you think of what what's the one thing that um offends you the most? Is there anything, because I always wonder, I always feel like comedians can say anything and for the most part, they can receive anything. Not always. There are some people who feign that they can take a joke and they really can't. But is there one thing that offends you? I think that, I mean, just conceptually broad, the thing that offends me the most are sort of like hypocrisies and double standards. That's the thing that I get fired up about the most. But I'm on Instagram just now, Michael Moore had posted a thing where he said, um, he said he said that he was like writing a letter to governor to Greg Abbott in Texas because he said uh, Governor Abbott thank you for sending those migrants out of the hellhole that we know as Texas and I, I took offense to that because if he hadn't said a hellhole maybe I would have thought it was funny but because he said a hellhole I'm from Texas my parents are immigrants they emigrated to Texas in 1967 I this is an immigration issue that I took kind of a personal offense to. Well, in all fairness, you didn't live in all of Texas. And I would imagine there are some parts of Texas that are quite the hellhole where the devil oh. resides. Yeah. I, I have definitely been pulled over for DWB in a town called Possum Kingdom, Texas. And what? Possum Kingdom. See, that's what? where the, that that's where Beelzebub lives. I'm and certain of it. The killer lives there too. Yeah, the killer definitely lives there. What about you, Lana? What what offends you? Oh, anything um I, I don't i can't really think of nothing right now i mean i, I mean i don't know nothing i mean i'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, sure saying, I'm not looking for an answer it, i'm just curious no I'm, I'm pretty sure there's something i think it has to do with the moment or how you say it you know what i'm saying but nothing really offends me um oh actually it do when people call me spanish mm. like it's and what's crazy is before i even before I even had any concept of of nationality or race or race or ethnicity, it used to really bother me. Like I used to go to school and girls would touch my hair and they said, like, I like your Spanish hair. And I'm like, it used to bother me. Like it used to Spanish hair. Like, yeah, like it like like when I used to have my hair straight in, in school, like black. Okay, because I was about to say I'm yeah. thinking about your hair now and I'm like, first of all, no, when I that when, ain't Spanish hair. When I used to have my on. hair straight and people like black girls used to come to me, Oh, I love your Spanish hair or they will, or they will say things like, Yeah, you know, my sisters have Puerto Rican and she has hair like you and it used to really bother me and then it kinda like when I actually got when my family educated me on on the whole, you know, transatlantic slave trade and all of that, like I understood, like, yeah, we're not Spanish, like that's my colonizer. Don't call me by the the language that I speak. That's right. not that's not who I am. Yeah, I can see that. And it's a, it's a very American thing. We don't experience even Hispanic, like we don't experience that where we're from. Hmm. Well, I can't speak because I'm not from there. I'm from here. Well, Hispanic was made up here in the United States. No, I know that. I meant in terms of, because you you and I have had this conversation mm -hmm. a gazillion times about colorism, about good hair and all of those things. And I think it is it comes from slavery. It comes from knowing that you're probably part white. That's why your hair is so straight. Or, you know, you are you get to stay in the house because you are mixed with something or whatever. And so colorism has is not only in this country, it's all over the world. Like the lighter you are, they think the better you are right. because apparently you must have some white in you, whether it's true or not. They believe that right. like everything from, you know, getting jobs, jobs to, you know, whether or not you're on the front of a magazine or not. Or even we see how, you know, Beyonce is already light skinned, but they lighten her even more. Right. So I think those types of things exist, especially the good hair, bad, bad hair thing. Mm -hmm. That's I think that's just a black thing that comes from us being oppressed and and hating ourselves yeah. for being what we are. Right, but I didn't understand that at twelve. You know what I'm saying? There are people who are thirty who still don't understand. Yeah, it. no, and I, and I under and I and I get that. So you know, sometimes sometimes I let it rise. Sometimes if it's in light conversation, I'd be like, I'm not Spanish. Yeah, like, you know. But I, well, and also I think it 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 can also have a lot to do with where you're from. I grew up in Tennessee, small town in Tennessee, where there were no Hispanics, Spanish, Latino, none of that. It was black folks and white folks right. and a couple who were mixed. Right. And so I remember my daddy would say things all the time. Like he only thought there were white people and black people. Right. And if you were a person who... Uh, didn't look black or white, then he just thought you were mixed. He never thought about Spanish, Puerto Rican, none of that. Right. And, you know, I remember my dad was so offended, but my dad was 
I don't even remember when he was born, probably in 1935 or something like that. But he right. would still use terms that were uh, unacceptable and shouldn't be used. <laughs> I mean, he's... Like he still called himself colored. Like I remember going to visit him in the hospital. It's like, yeah, um, the nurse came in and you should go talk to her. And I was like, which one? The colored one the colored nurse, you know, or he'd say things like oriental. And I'm like, what the <laughs> hell? Like, you can't talk like that. But he was a man of a certain right. age. So from, you know, where he was from and where he was born and all of that, I think also factored into the lack of knowledge, the lack of education, a lot of the things that were not made accessible to us to understand right. uh, all of the different sex and, and races and ethnicity. So nah, I got you. So I don't know. I'm gonna tell you what offends me the most is that I've been living in L.A. for five years and I haven't had a date yet. That's what I'm offended by. <laughs> and with that note, I'm going to go to happy hour somewhere. <laughs> Thank you, Indian Jay. Listen, I, I want to see you on. I want to see you perform. Where are you performing oh, next? Dude. I know you've been in New York. That's when he got too good oh, for us. I couldn't get him on the phone. Oh, no, no. New are you York. Are you me while I'm no, doing uh, it? Oh, King of Comedy. Oh, oh What's right? Indian Jay. I thought we what? were oh, we were done. No, I'm still. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm asking him when is his next show. Oh. I'm, you know, I want to come see him perform. I wanted to come to Caroline's, but I knew I wasn't going to be in New York. How'd that go, by the way? Caroline's was fun. I mean, I think I think that's how that's. I think the producers of that show that I was that we had talked about last time that I was up for. I think they saw me at Caroline's, and that's why they wanted me. That's why they were interested in me. Um, but. Uh, uh, obviously nothing happened with that show because otherwise I would have moved to New York by now. Um, we wouldn't hear from you ever again. We know how this works. <laughs> yeah, we'd have to it's drop the Indian. and he'd just be, yeah. it's Jay now. Yeah, Jay Sherrod. Right. What? <laughs> I see him on Fifth Avenue. We're going to call him Indian Jay. Jay anymore. He'd be like, that's Mr. Right. Jay to you. <laughs> we'll see him on Fifth Avenue. like, hey, Jay. He'd be like, I don't know He's you. He's like, niggas. <laughs> <laughs> But Jasmine, if you're looking to have your allergies mess with and and pollen in your nose and whatnot, I'll be in Dallas November fourth and fifth. Oh, that's something we could do, Lena. Really? You would go because I heard I remember you saying you don't like Dallas because it messes with your allergies. It does. Well, you know, I don't have allergies. It gives me asthma. It causes some kind of reaction in me. I think it's the devil <laughs> who resides there. I think it's the governor. I don't know. Abbott in a wheelchair. It's Abbott. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it. Listen, I'm going to go have a drink. Uh, I'm going to uh, try my best not to cry over this rough faced princess <laughs> or whatever that was, that book. I I'm still. That's going to be your no birthday gift. And then Jay, give me the information. You got it, Lane. Mm -mm -mm. Thanks, Jay. <laughs>